All right, it's Hard Talk Radio. I'm your host, Mr. Deadman. Uh, co-host, uh, Victor J. Amadeus Beowulf IV is with us. How's it going? It's going great. And good evening to the audience here. Thank you for uh, uh, your investment in the Patreon account. And, you know, we appreciate these donations. That's right. So we're here to talk about society. Man, uh, like... <laughs> Talk about a movie, man. Wild. Wild. There's so much um, to talk about. Right? Right? Uh, I mean, that last scene, I think people who know about this movie already know about that scene. The crazy KY jelly shower orgy of, uh, I don't know, man. It's just nasty, but it's, it's, it's cool at the same time. I mean, and I'm not spoiling anything. If you Google Society 1992 or 1989... That's the first thing you're going to see. It's what everybody Absolutely. Knows. That's the cover of the movie. It's the yeah. cover of the movie. You're not giving anything away. They know. They're like, they're giving you a little bit of the money shot, but not the whole thing. And you need to see the whole thing. Worth it just for that. Bye. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, how would, you, how would you describe society? So society, uh, just based off the title, you realize we're, what we're talking about in society, and literally, uh, the rich are feeding off the poor. You know, so it's definitely got a good theme there uh, that's talking about the upper class and the lower class, and that's that's present there. But society is a good old campy horror film. Uh, that's very bizarre, and it only gets more and more bizarre as the time progresses. And it's not your typical. Uh, cheap 80s late 80s early 90s film that's about 85 minutes this joker goes on for about an hour and 40 minutes but it doesn't feel that way it's a great film it is really good and you're right uh it, like first off the director is brian usna uh who also did reanimator I believe and uh the bride of reanimator and very cool i didn't this, know that when this movie came out it came out in 1989 uh it was released in in europe but it didn't really do anything here in the U.S., and it was shelved for a little bit. And then they finally released it three years later, a kind of limited release. It didn't really, like, no one really knows about it. It's kind of like a cult classic at this point. Um, <laughs> but, and right now it's free on Amazon Prime. I'm not sure when you'll watch it, but uh, right now it's currently free on Amazon Prime. Oh, it's free? It's free right now? Oh, look at that. So check that out. Check that out. Um, I mean... I have to say, like, like the story. I mean, it's it's kind of like just a, a kid, a college age kid, kind of college age high school. He's like high school, right? He's high school. Yeah, he, he's in high school. Yeah, definitely high school. I think his license plate says hoops, so he's obviously yeah. I think an athlete. Oh, they didn't really go into that. Yeah. He's dealing with. Uh, he's troubled with some um, family issues. He think he's paranoid. He thinks his family is out to get him, uh, and his family has a has a habit of incest. <laughs> it's heavily implied between the, the father and the daughter. Uh, and the mom, apparently it's just like, oh, come on in. I don't know. Really, really bizarre. Um, I'm telling <laughs> And it opens it's up definitely like that. Not, uh, I definitely would uh, suggest that, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> this is a movie for mommy and daddy alone, I think. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Definitely no kids. But... <laughs> right. But if I recall correctly, isn't the opening scene like when he's in the uh, psychiatrist's office or psychologist's office talking about his issues? <laughs> it's like, OK, that comes right after the opening scene. Oh, so okay. the opening scene. All right. So this is a good chick flick. All right. So if you're a guy, you're taking your uh, girl out, you know, you go, you don't have a lot of money. You know, you go to McDonald's or yeah. Burger King, whatever. You yeah. come home and you, you know, just want to watch a movie on the couch. Yeah. Great opening scene because you get to see Billy Warlock. Come in and he's in his tank top, has a nice tan, good looking guy, right? Really good looking guy. Uh, listen and sweat, mm-hmm. you know, and he gets a butcher knife. Does he go for a butcher knife in the beginning? I believe so. I think so. And uh, something is amiss here. Something is going on. And he's, like you said, paranoid. He's freaked out. And uh, and then all of a sudden, he's on the floor in front of the door and it, it appears that he has been possibly sleepwalking and having a, you know, a nightmare. That's right. 
and then we have the the counselor where the that, counselor does. that's right that's right it begins kind of like how it ends because that that's a scene like later on that you see okay yeah and yeah much like american psycho you're not sure what's real and what's not mm -hmm. which i think this movie did a really good job on that oh yeah <clears throat> oh man and you know there's a lot of what the fuck moments right mm -hmm. uh, like you said in the counselor's office uh, he's talking to the counselor and he goes and he takes a bite out of an apple right yeah. what the fuck is an apple doing in the counselor's office anyway but anyway <laughs> uh, he's, he's, I don't know, maybe maybe he's vegan I don't know but oh, maybe it's like a snack a healthy snack have have some apples bananas I don't possibly know. Thoughts. but it's what's in the apple that's but he crazy. takes a bite of this apple that's right yeah, absolutely crazy it reminds you of lost boys you know when the keeper sutherland offers michael the uh the rice the fried rice and he sees maggots and he's like it's only rice michael <laughs> you know what i mean right it's only rice so we're, we're seeing a guy who's having hallucinations maybe delusional so you're suspecting something maybe like i don't know paranoid schizophrenia possibly some yeah. kind of mental illness yeah yeah and you start thinking that okay maybe it's maybe there's something wrong with this kid Maybe it's all in his head. Of course, I mean, that's the premise of the movie. So it's like, no, okay, I'm long for this ride. But very quickly, things the house are uh, going down. Like something happens between what a sister and a sister's boyfriend or soon to be ex boyfriend. Okay. Yeah. So this is, this is where the movie gets really bizarre, right? So mm -hmm. you have uh, uh, Blanchard, I think is his name, mm -hmm. uh, David Blanchard. And uh, they notice the van, Blanchard's van outside of the house. And so uh, I guess Billy goes and tells his sister that David's out there or something of that nature. But in reality, David is actually in the closet, right? And he's yep. stalking the sister. So, <laughs> Yeah. Which, when you see that, you go, oh, man. It, it, when, I, when I first saw it, I was like, man, that guy's a creep. Turns out later right, on, right. while he sounds like he's Alex Jones level paranoid about what's going on with the family, turns out. He's kind of right. He's really right. There's something really wrong with this um, well-to-do, very rich Beverly Hills wasp family. Uh, okay. <laughs> and with, with, so, I think quickly with, there's a shower scene with, with, with the sister. And yes. Right. I, it, go ahead, man. Go ahead. You, you talk about that shower scene, man. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh First off, there's there's a lot of like, oh, it, it's a it, it I, there's a vibe to that scene. I could just sum up like, you can just go to Pornhub right now and you can see videos <laughs> around the same thing. Help me, stepbrother, I'm stuck. Help me, get me stuck out of this shower. Help me. It, I swear, it's like you start you start realizing very really quickly that the main character is right. That uh, Billy Warlock is right. Uh, this family is fucked up. They they are they are they need help. They need some deep seated therapy. Like. Uh, but her skin start that's that's the part where you start notice like her skin's like messed up. There's like something like on her back, right? That's that's right. Uh, she goes down and she's getting into her her dress. I guess it's for a coming out party, mm -hmm. but it's a dress, and she needs her brother to zip it up. And uh, he notices like KY jelly like substance on her back, and then you know he gets to looking at it again, but it's not there. Mm -hmm. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the coming out party. You know, that means That's something right. totally different now. <laughs> yes. No, no, sister Absolutely. isn't coming out as a lesbian in this movie. They're more like coming of age and um and 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 daddy, am I am I am I good enough for you? So that's that's the vibe, dude. That's what it and I think this movie offers a lot of, I guess, commentary on that sort of um well to do rich society. I wouldn't know because I'm not part of that, never really been part of that, never will be. Uh, maybe Same that's why here. I relate with uh, Billy Warlock. I think most people relate to Billy Warlock because that was that's us. We're we're not part of that family. We're never going to be. Absolutely. And let me just say, Billy Warlock, phenomenal actor. I don't know why he never went anywhere. Uh, mm -hmm. I haven't looked him up on Wikipedia. I don't know what happened to him. But but if you see this acting role he does, you'll think Anthony Hopkins. Who? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Oscar. Well, you know, maybe I'm jumping a little bit ahead, but the movie's good. He does a good acting job. Well, let's continue with the progression of the film. I apologize for that little interruption. No, no, it's all right. It's it's good. It's good. <laughs> you notice too. I notice 
Uh, one second. Let me, let me take care of this. Oh, we're good. We're good. Let's see, I'm trying to remember what happens next. Oh, well, there's a beach scene. They, they go to the beach. Oh, yeah. That's right. That's right. Bill, Billy, of course, is dating a... You know, this is pretty stereotypical. He's the... Uh, from what I can tell, he's an athlete. He's also running for student president. So a real popular guy in high school. It doesn't really fit the... Uh, the mental illness stereotype at all because he seems to be functionally perfectly fine in his society at the high school. Right. Uh, but they go to the beach together, and this girl's name is Shona. And Shona is just incensed that she did not get invited to Teddy's party. And Teddy's, once again, just my fader and pretty pink, you know, just really, uh, how would you describe Teddy? Just an upper class kind of. Upper class douche. You know, I'm better than that. Or, yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Dude, bag. That's exactly right. Yeah, it's, I mean, he, yeah. he was like, he was like, he looked like he was gonna be like the like. Well, he's definitely the antagonist. I got that, yeah. like some douchebag jock sort of guy, you know. Absolutely, sort of, uh, this is a, the vibe I get is he's gonna be a politician or a Wall Street. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. A, a Wall Street guy. He's gonna be right. American Psycho. He's gonna be be that guy. Um, yes. So they're concerned about that. There's a party thing. But then on the beach, he encounters, even though he has a girlfriend, uh, he, he encounters this chick, uh, Claudia. Or no, Clarissa. My bad. I got her name. That's it. Clarissa. Clarissa. Yeah. And uh, she's she's quite interesting. I, I agree. She, in many ways. Uh, <laughs> in many, many ways, Clarissa is very interesting. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh it's, it's another one of those what the fuck moments uh, with Clarissa. So uh, definitely watch that film and be on the lookout for Clarissa. What what, what happens at the beach? I know that uh, she sprays some suntan lotion in his face, but what else? Oh goes yeah, on because there? he he's he can't stop but but staring because of her her wonderful looks. Um. Oh, then you meet Clarissa's mom, which I don't understand what that was supposed to mean. That was one of those what the fuck moments when you you see Clarissa, is very beautiful. She I think supposed to be Hispanic, and okay, and then you meet her mom, which you find out later is her mom. I guess and and it's like this ogre thing. I don't know how to explain it. You know the way I'm describing it might sound kind of offensive now in in this current age and current climate of PC correctness. But uh, the movie depicted her as an ogre. Um, I would I would say that even grunted like, mm, mm, mm. right. And what I can understand is just her fixation with hair. You know, you you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, she would eat hair. Just, I don't even understand why her character needed to exist. Why they needed to develop the character? Maybe they needed more time. I, I don't know, but it's 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 funny. But it just kind of well, it's one of those things, like you said, what the fuck, you know. Yeah, I mean, if you go with the theme that this movie it has saying some stuff about society, which, hold on, I think we'll get into that. Okay, we have, we have the mom. She's kind of weird, okay, the way she's depicted. Um, what else? So so the going theme here is that just about everyone around this guy, around Billy Warlock, is something's amiss with him. And even, even with his girlfriend, something's amiss with her. When he starts having... Uh, goes to her place to start, you know, making out and, you know, having sex, you know, you know getting getting heavy. Um, she's her, she her body's all contorted in a weird way, <laughs> like right. like in a way that it's not even possible unless you're dead. Which, right. to me, was to imply that she's one of them. She's not him. She's like one of the the wasp or upper class, uh, rich guys, rich people, but. Spoiler alert! Like she ends the movie, she she leaves with Billy, with, with Billy Warlock at the end. I like, yeah, uh, that, yeah. Even even more bizarre and strange. Uh, but uh, don't don't let that get catch you away from the movie. There are some weaknesses there and some things that you may think oh, yeah. doesn't make sense. But it's a fun movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's. Go to the, uh, the 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 class special uh, running for office. It's him, and it's another guy named Martin. And Martin, I think, is a lackey of Teddy's 
probably. That's the kind of relationship vibe I'm getting from those two. And uh, they do everything they can to distract uh, Billy as he's speaking and talking about the dress code. Right. Right. And uh, you know the distraction means they use, they're use they using Clarissa to uh, mm-hmm. keep him from speaking. And, you know, I believe that they probably, Basic Instinct probably stole <laughs> a scene from that for the, their film. Yes, yes. So, you know, and think about that scene. I think the movie starts making a little bit more sense now, at least to me. So maybe like in the beginning of the movie, in the, towards that part, Clarissa was being used by the Wasp of that upper class society. So she was one of them. But later on when it's like, wait a second. These people are, are dying or they're, they're disappearing. Something's happening to them. What, where are they going? And he starts figuring out that there's like this this weird conspiracy, this weird thing going on under uh, you know underneath everything. So the more he finds out about it, the more he exp- explores. Clarissa starts becoming more on his side on the whole thing, realizing, wait a second, you know these people are messed up, and uh, she, she's also not one of them. I don't know. Is it's, that what- it's hard to see. I think that I think she might be one of them, but I think your interpretation could be right too. That's one of those things where I'm not sure. But my impression was Teddy was using her to kind of uh, bring Billy into the fold because mm. what you realize mm. later on. Or, do we need to give away spoilers here? I think we already have. We already did. Some we already did. <laughs> so if you're if you're watching this review, uh, spoiler alert: we're probably going to discuss some. Pretty much the whole story, I imagine. Yeah. This is where it's at. It's I think. pretty much. I mean, it's, so, uh, it's an old movie. I mean, you could Google it. I mean, it's, it's true. That's true. I mean, this movie gives away the, like I said, it gives away that the ending scene on the cover. So, and there's plenty of weird, bizarre things that happen that, even if even if we told you like every like I guess crucial scenes, it you have to watch it for yourself to to get everything. You have to experience it. You really do. Um, even if I told you, like, man, at the end of this movie, there's this crazy KY jelly orgy thing where the rich are feeding off of this uh, Billy Warlock guy because he's he's a poor. And the movie is about this. Um, it's creating like this caricature of, of the rich feeding off the poor and showing power structures and uh, corruption and all of that. Oh, yeah. Um, you have to see it for yourself. It's yeah. all there. uh but I think Clarissa, in my view, is I think they borrowed a lot from Lost Boys, you know, and I don't say that just because of the apple, but uh, Jamie Gertz's character was luring Michael into the fold, you know, with Kiefer Soto and his yeah. crew of vampires. Right. Well, I think she was doing something similar, but of course, Billy's not going to be used uh, to bring into the fold. He's going to be used as a, uh, a ritual that's conducted by the society. And which is a very <laughs> uh, gory and bizarre ritual, which you will see at the end of the movie. Right, right, right. And I got to say too, like the like the cinematics in this movie were, were just great. Um, the the use of camera angles, the, the the lighting, it really gave you like the sense of what you're seeing is not really everything there. Like it's there's much more. There's depth to what you're seeing. Um, it gives you like this unsettled feeling. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you feel like something's not right here. Like they'll have like oh, angled shots, various like tints of green on, on the characters. Like, where's the lighting come from? What's going on? Like, it's kind of eerie. Kinda right. Yeah. I, I noticed that too. That's kind of weird, isn't it? Mm-hmm. But it, it is effective. I mean, it's, a, it's obviously had fun with this. I mean, this is a campy horror movie that's trying to explore some major issues and. I think it's fun. Yeah, and, and that exploring the major some major issues that's uh, that might be why it maybe didn't do so well here in the states. I don't know. I mean, it could be for sure. Uh, plus, this is the late eighties. Uh, you know, I don't know why it didn't do well in the states. It probably should have. Mm-hmm. I mean. It, I definitely could see it on HBO. Right? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Man. I mean, let's see. What else? What, what was... What Wait, were, you what, know what? what, I totally, what we totally glossed over... I totally missed some parts. I mean... Okay, so... 
people start disappearing. I guess we could talk a little bit about that, uh, the disappearance stuff. So first it's, um, well, it's like weird accidents happen, but like the bodies disappear. Like the sister's boyfriend, she dies or he dies, but he, like you don't see the body. Like the body's gone until like later on when he's like uh, uh, having the funeral service or whatever. Uh, and, and then you see, it, but the, the body's hollow. Like there's nothing to it. It's like just a shell. It's like what All happened right, to him? His friend Malu actually touches the cheek and it kind of just shatters a little bit. And they're thinking, well, maybe it's just bad reconstruction because uh, he's in such a brutal wreck. Uh, uh, but, at, you know, you brought up the beach earlier. And I think what we glossed over was a major part of that movie where we kind of realized that David wasn't, although he it was a stalker, mm-hmm. there was a very important plot motivation reason for him being a stalker. Oh, yeah. Because uh, he was also at the beach and he's like, Billy. Billy, come here. I need to show you something. He's got this, uh, I guess, Samson briefcase or something. Yeah. And so he takes him to the side over by the pier, and he's pulling this cassette tape recorder out, and he's playing this <laughs> recording. And, and what it was is he took a microphone and inserted it into the uh, his ex-girlfriend's ear, and he put a uh, another recorder underneath their, the parents' car. Mm-hmm. So, you know, real, st- real stalkerish behavior. But right. What it captures is important because that's when you start seeing really uh, sure signs of that incestuous rela- inc- incest. Nah, I can't say it right now. It's okay. Incestuous relationship you're talking about. Right. Uh, and of course, he rushes that to the psychiatrist, and uh, the psychiatrist plays in the tape the next day, and the tape has changed. You know, it's no yeah. longer saying what he heard with David. And. Uh, of course, Billy is talking about going to see David. He's going to call David, you know, and uh, the wreck happens miraculously after that. Mm-hmm. And just like that, like he has a wreck, the body's gone. You see the blood splatter, but the body's gone and stuff like that. And you're right about the recording. The recording was was a big deal. Um, and, and that scene when he, he tried, the psychiatrist played it. It's like, oh, man, what happened here? It's like, okay, <laughs> man, they're, they're messing with this guy. Oh yeah, yeah. See that—that's when we are like, okay, yeah. There's there's much more to this. What else are we gonna find? We're fully convinced Billy Warlock is not insane here. There's some bizarre shit going on. At this point in the movie, I was like, is it aliens? Like, what are we talking about? Like, what is this? I thought the same thing. I, I thought it was aliens. I was for like, sure it was aliens. Like invasion of the body snatcher sort of stuff going on. Um, let's see. No, but. But it wasn't aliens. But they kind of give it away at the end. They, they just say, like, it turns out Billy Warlock wasn't even a member of the family. Like, he was adopted or whatever. And it's like, you're not, right. e- you're not even one of us. You're never one of us. <laughs> you're, you're, you're not even the same race or same species. Uh, you know, and that's when they start having their weird orgy thing. And um, <laughs> they have hands sliding into body and the fingers mer- merging into the body and they're sucking each other off in a weird way. It's, oh, yeah, man. It's disturbing. That's that's the word I'm looking for. It's, it's like, whoa, yeah. what is this? Yeah, really freaky stuff. You see it, it looks sexual, even though it's not sexual. There's nothing sexual about that scene, even though everyone's naked. But you don't. there's no nudity. I don't really, I don't, you don't really see it if you... If you see a titty, let me know. I didn't. I looked at that scene. I did not see a titty anywhere. I saw plenty of skin, though. A lot of skin and grotesque ways. I was just like, what is this? To give a visual of that scene, imagine chewing, I don't know, four or five big pieces of bubble gum and then spitting it out on the ground. And that's what the room looked like. Only it wasn't bubble gum. It was people. Yeah. Okay. It was people all yeah. like assimilated and blended, melting. They're like melting into each other. Uh, and they're feeding off like someone. I guess with the, the, were they feeding off of Billy? I guess they're feeding off of Billy. I mean, no, they're, they're no, trying... they were feeding off of uh, Blanchard. Uh, Blanchard. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, it was. Yeah, they, they, it was crazy, man. I mean, mm-hmm. the, you know, the ending didn't make any sense to me either. Uh, they were able to get out of there so easy, you know. It's like yeah, they uh, did get Billy out there was able quick. to. Yeah, and it's like okay, so they spend the whole movie. 
doing all these cover-ups where they're sending the police to to uh, to to kill David. Uh, and they're at one point, what do they do? They they say they take Billy to the hospital, pronounce him dead. Uh, so you're thinking, okay, why don't these people just call somebody and have them kill Billy and Clarissa and his buddy Malo? I mean. Right, you know, uh, because uh, the police are involved. They look like they're involved. The police help the the family or the society. <laughs> You're going to be a great just, contribution to society. That's what the psychiatrist right. said. You're going to be that's a great right. contribution. Mm. Talk about foreshadowing. You know, you're right. thinking about oh, he's building this guy up. You know, good self esteem. But in reality, no, he's he's foreshadowing that this guy's going to be a feast for society. <laughs> right, right, and he. And you're right. He gets out there. He gets out of that so easily. Like, he <laughs> in the fight isn't even that much. I I don't even recall much of a struggle. He just gets out of that. It's like he just gets out of the house, gets in his jeep yeah. with uh, Clarissa and his right. friend. Clarissa explains they, it all. Man. <laughs> right, and they, and they drive off, which makes me. That's when I was like, wait, wait a second. I thought Clarissa was one of them. Maybe she is. Maybe she's not. I don't know anymore. What's going on? Keep your keep keep your narrative straight, man. <laughs> but you know, it seemed like the director wouldn't have um, fun with with that scene, and uh, oh, yeah. wanted to create a fun movie that was kind of bizarre. You know, I think he wanted to have fun. I think he did have fun. I think he definitely achieved the bizarre movie, right? For sure. I, but I think this is what I believe in my head. I truly believe. He's like, he woke up one day, he's like, wow, what if we have this huge orgy, right? And they're all stuck together like bubble gum. Uh, like, <laughs> that would be so awesome. That would be 30 minutes of the movie, and then, you know, we'll just throw some kind of a fucking plot together just to get to that point. <laughs> That's my opinion. <laughs> well, I mean, you're not you're not far off. You're really not. I mean, from, from what I've heard, I believe uh, Brian Yuzna, the, the, the director... Um, that scene came to him as a, a, a nightmare, a dream. And, and that's where this movie came from, from that. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. And he got the budget. I totally it. He got the approval to make this movie when he did, uh, after Reanimator, he got a two movie deal and he was like, okay, I'll make Bride of Reanimator, but I'll make this other movie Society, <laughs> but I'll make Society first, knowing that I'll be able to make that movie. <laughs> so he already knew that this movie was not going to, it's probably not going to go, you know, it's not going to be what they want. It's going to be what he wants. <laughs> that's uh, right. That's right. <laughs> which, uh, man, I mean, it had, like you said, it had Warlock in it. Billy Warlock. Badass name. Great actor. You, you, you got to wonder. It's like, why could someone who looks like Billy Warlock, acts like Billy Warlock, and had been in Halloween 2, not make it any further in his career than he did? And he may have now. I don't know, but those are the only two movies I can think of that I've seen him in. Uh, yeah. I yeah. just don't know what happened there. I know he's in TV, only because of the Internet Movie Database, <laughs> Days of Our <laughs> Lives, um, uh, The Young and the Restless. So I've probably seen him in a number of uh, soap operas. And I used to watch him when I was at my grandma's house, you know, but I just not not knowing, not knowing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, I think... I think, I mean, if you were to rate this movie on a scale between one and ten, like one how 10. how would you where would you rate it? So, if you would have to first of all think about what am I watching here? Am I watching something very serious that I really want to think about, or am I just wanting to have a good time? I just wanted to relax and you know uh, just chill and just not have to think too hard if i'm rating it that way i would put this movie at a solid eight man. uh and the reason why it'd be an eight is because of some weaknesses there like the uh how easy they were able to get away from the house mm -hmm. uh the mother just made no sense man oh oh what if the mom was how clarissa sees her mom or how everybody sees clarissa's mom what if the mom being the ogre because you know i was going to talk about this but I forgot was what if that's supposed to be how society sees her mom as I, I don't i don't know i'm just grasping at straws there pulling some, something out of my ass obviously that but, would make sense though i mean you know i mean uh I, that's a good point if that, that was the intention yeah i can see that because why sure could. you have her she's 
the outlier. She's the only one that's depicted in that sort of like, ooh, like, Ur. sort of like caveman <laughs> Neanderthal you, sort of way. Now that I think, now that I think about it, when when her hair died like a punk, you know, back then in the eighties, yeah, and you know they were kind of the outsiders, that kind mm-hmm. of maybe, and you may have a good point there. I mean, uh, she she was. She wasn't one. Of, she she wasn't white. Uh, I mean, that could be a racial thing. Um, so you talking about the mother, or are you talking or, about Clarissa? I think it wasn't Clarissa supposed to be like. I thought she was supposed to be Hispanic or Latina or something. I I don't know. It, it looked fair skin. I I couldn't tell you. Um, it looked. That's why I'm going with this because. But oh, I mean, yeah, you're right, because you're right. There was nobody in the room in high society that was anything other than Caucasian and Clarissa. Right. I believe if I could be wrong about that, but Clarissa, uh, like you said, looked like she could have been Latina. All right. And if I'm wrong about that, guys in the comment section, let me know. All right. I mean, I'm, I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to make this movie make sense. Maybe I'm trying too hard. Explain the mom. <laughs> Explain the mom to us. We, I get... I get the commentary, the social commentary behind the the orgy scene. I think we all do, but explain the mom. That's the thing that's like, what is this? Come on. Uh, I think I, I would rate it. Going back to the rating thing, yeah, solid seven, solid seven. seven. Yeah, yeah. It, it's obviously there's there's a caveat that it's it's bizarre. You, you gotta. You know, take some shrooms while you're watching this movie. <laughs> it's it's good though. It doesn't disappoint. I think not I think at all. What you see in it, mm, everything with the story, with the acting from Billy Warlock, uh, and the bizarre scenes and interesting characters, it's definitely going to keep you entertained. I would put Billy. I, I agree with you 100. percent I would put Billy Warlock's acting up there with. Uh, who was Martin Sheen's uh, brother? Joe Estevez. Mm-hmm. I'd say he's a solid Joe Estevez. <laughs> right? So, I mean, his acting yeah, think, in this movie was pretty good. I mean... Yeah, it wasn't bad at all. Yeah. Then again, it, it makes it look better that every character in this movie is insane. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's, that's true. Oh, God. All right. It's true. Uh, so... Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, if you if you like this review, let us know what do you think about society. Was it good? Did you like it? Did you hate it? <laughs> and uh, what movie should we uh, review in the future? All right. Well, you guys, I'll take it easy. All right. Thank you all. Have a good night. <laughs>